It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the NFC South. It's the Buccaneers and the Falcons, and it's coming up next on EA Sports. First opened in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. A moment ago, here was the scene. The Falcons coming out from their tunnel to the roar of all the folks here in Atlanta. We're ready for football as these Falcons get set to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And CD, you look at our quarterback matchup in this ball game. That's where the focus naturally gravitates. And I think we have a fairly interesting one here. Tom Brady of the Bucks, Matt Ryan of the Falcons. And both of them have terrific ability to improvise. And that means when the first read's not there, how quickly can you go through your progressions? Can you hang in there and take a shot as you release it? Can you buy time outside of the pocket? Can you pull it down and run if need be? I think we'll see all of those traits on display in this one. will go as a touchback and they will begin things at the 25. Atlanta takes the field. Their offensive leader, of course, Matt Ryan, the former Boston College Eagle. And when you start with listing a guy's accomplishments like Matt Ryan's all these years in the league, near the top of the league in completions and percentage, touchdowns each and every year, has won an MVP, taken his team to the Super Bowl. You're talking about a guy who might be finished, but he still has gas left in the tank. Big right arm, great leader, the face of his franchise. Opening carry of the game for Cordero Patterson. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Open receiver, that's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. And they work this well up field across the 45. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. On first down, Ryan. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. And the defense could not have written a much better script than that first drive, pick six. The offense never got a chance to really get oiled up there, did they? But the defense, they certainly got in gear. What a big-time play and a great way for them to start. And now the offense, they've got to turn things around and figure this out because your backs are on the ground real quickly. Yeah, usually when you're starting the game getting the ball, 0-0 zero, zero is the only score you're worried about. Now the second time you get it, you're already down a touchdown. Extra point up and good by Suckup. And that makes the score 7-0. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And Patterson will not return it. It comes out to the 25. Matt Ryan in the offense heading back onto the field and looking to erase his memory bank from his opening drive a moment ago that ended in a pick six for the first points of the ball game. And in my experience, a lot of quarterbacks, after throwing a pick six, the first thing they want to do is fire another one and get those points back immediately. But what really helps you get back in sync is a good, long, methodical drive, mixing the run and the pass tamp things down a little bit. Now a throw right side, take it in here to start this drive. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And partner, 
where they're locked in man coverage out left and end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. They'll run on first down. Patterson, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there. Second down. To throw is Ryan. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first down, it's Patterson. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Now it's Ryan. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. It's caught, Smith. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll make it second and short. Well, this has certainly been a nice drive with the way they've spread the football around. Here, they even get the fullback involved in the passing game. That's got to cause a lot of consternation on the defensive side. you got to cover him, too. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. The sack by the Super Bowl champion and pro bowler Jason Pierre-Paul. Not the start to this one that any quarterback would want or envision. Remember, he had the pick six, and here he ends up on his backside. And you have to wonder to yourself, okay, after throwing the pick six, did he get too careful with the football and not deliver downfield and take that sack? They've got to make sure that he's really into this game. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. Ryan. He's got his man sharp, complete. And they'll hustle up to stop him well shy of the first, right around the 15. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on, because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, for the short game. So a good kick there, and they put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the throw. By the way, I said bow tie. I mean, just bow. Not, Either not way. the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Tampa Bay coming out along with a man who needs no introduction, the great Tom Brady. Well, we've all seen what Tom Brady can do on a football field for a couple of decades now. But how about his most impressive accomplishment? Moving to a different franchise and taking them to a Super Bowl title as well. Not many players can continually stiff arm father time the way that he has. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Off play action, Brady. That's caught by the big tight end, O.J. Howard. He'll be dropped after a game of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Throwing again on second down. Brady, it's caught by Mike Evans. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. To Evans on the slam. When Mike Evans sees man coverage, I don't think he's the only guy that gets excited. I'll guarantee
routine a guy throwing the ball does because guess what? He's got a lot of options about where to place it because of Mike Evans' size and frame. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. Again, they'll throw with Brady. That's complete to Tyler Johnson. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 25-yard line. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. It's been all passing all the time on this drive. Five for five and now first and goal. Feels like a case of until they stop us, we might as well keep running the offense that we like to run. Don't change up and do something different just because you think you need to. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A nine-yard touchdown there as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower. Bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. Extra point put through by Suckup, and that pushes the lead up to 11. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And Patterson not going to return this. It'll come out to the 25. Atlanta regains possession of the football. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. After one, a 14-3 ball game. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. As they've got it with a second and four coming up. Play action. It's Ryan. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Come on, Simon, play! That was a fun one to watch right there. Nice see breaking around and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. They'll run on first down. Patterson, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. At well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Well, to me, there was no question about the intent there, and I think he was a little fortunate that the penalty flag didn't come out for grounding. But he'll get away with it and get another shot on third down. On third down, Ryan. Throwing right, and that's complete. And yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. 
Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. It looks like a loss of right around 11 there on first down to set him back on second. Well, I think that time he just maybe held on to it a little too long, CD, because after a couple of seconds in this league, you know those defenders are coming. And how many times do we talk about complementary football? We usually talk about does the offense help the defense? Does the defense help the offense? I think in this case, does the quarterback help out his offensive line? You only have a certain amount of time to get rid of the football. They can only do so much. On this play, he took them to the limits. Second and 21, a lot of ground to cover. A shotgun handoff to Patterson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He lost four there, and it's third down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And he'll complete this one to Patterson. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Now a play fake. Brady. Flush to his right. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. Now those are the ones that hurt defensively. You do everything right. Excellent pressure, good coverage downfield, and then he slips out the back door and turns it into a nice game. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now carry there for Fournette as he's able to work his way for a gain of about five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that, so when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Well, speed is definitely a calling card if you play cornerback in this league, and he does a terrific job there of hustling in quickly to make the play. And you can just see that whole play developing. That's where, as a defender, you just lock in on your target and say, I'm not even thinking about breaking stride. I'm running straight for the belt buckle because where it goes, that's where you find his body. And he was able to get in there and make a great play. On play action, it's Brady. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Probably helps your confidence level on those fourth down sneaks to have a quarterback as tall as he is. Yeah, you're talking about being able to extend at the end and make sure the ball gets to the first down marker. But also, he has to be able to drop his hips and get down behind that offensive line in order to move forward. Because if he just runs it straight up and down, you and I both know that they'll snap him backwards. Well done there, well executed. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. To throw is Brady. Escaping the pressure right. That's complete to his running back, Evans. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 42. Three, 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 
Here's Brady to throw. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They go back to the ground now with Fournette. And he's taken down inside the 30. He was brought down by We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches. Two-minute drill. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Brady going to throw. And this is caught by Evans. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Open man is got one. It's complete. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Into the red zone, it's Brady. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. It's now second and six at the eight yard line. Brady to throw again. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. Good coverage on the outside, and I think that's where he wanted to check that down to. But once he saw the danger over there, he just threw that one over everyone's head. Smart play. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Here's Brady. Flushed out right. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Tom Brady in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bucs would extend their lead here just before halftime. I'd have to say we're all a little bit surprised there because at his age, with his speed, or should I say lack thereof, the only rushing touchdowns I would expect are on quarterback sneaks. But here, he found all of his guys covered. He said, why not? And by the way, if that doesn't fire up your team to see the veteran like that risking his body for the touchdown, I don't know what will. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half is the kick is away. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Final play of the half. It's Ryan. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Buccaneers out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though. 
Let's take a look at the next-gen stats from the first half for the Bucks. And even though they've got the big cushion, I would imagine they'd like to see a little more out of their passing game. Pretty pedestrian numbers through two quarters of play. Meanwhile, for the Falcons, they too found some success throwing the football. But I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Bucs with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway, taking it about the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. They're looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Foyasade Amurikin. And he takes this one back into the end zone. The Falcon defense has a touchdown. Well, dare I say it, it's kind of quid pro quo. Both defenses now with an interception return for a touchdown. Your vocabulary, sir. Well done. but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. A time to get another look at this Buccaneer offense. They had that first half lead, but they have been shut down here in this third quarter, so time to retool a bit. And probably need to tap into that emotional vein that gets them back to really playing hard and effectively. Because a lot of times we think it's just play calls and this isn't working and they're shutting them down. Sometimes when you get a lead, you lose your edge. You don't play quite as hard. That's what they're looking for here. Trying to get that edge back as they've watched this lead shrink a little. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now Brady. Into the hands of Darden. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 33. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10. Down at the 33. Brady now to throw. He'll get this one complete to Darden. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. 
Second and five. Again, it's Brady. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. Now a first carry for Giovanni Brown. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. Brady to throw for it on fourth down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Johnson. And now this is going to be close. The defense says they stopped him, and they did. Bruce Arians takes a shot there, but his guys come up empty. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. Got a man. It's Patterson complete. They juked him. And he's brought down after a very nice game. That turned into a very well orchestrated play right there. Going to work his way out of the backfield to the right. And after he looked it in, he found plenty of space to roam and picked up big yardage. From midfield now, here's Ryan. It's caught, Smith. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And as a quarterback, you're always pleased when you can use all the weapons at your disposal. Here he spots his fullback underneath, gets the completion right there for a nice pickup. To throw again on second down, Ryan. He's got his big tight end. That's Hurst. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 31-yard line. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. On first down, it's Patterson. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Once more, they turn to Patterson. And he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On third and one, Ryan. Open man there is Patterson complete. Touchdown! Cordero Patterson. have cut it to within a score. Well, this offense only mustered three points in the first half on that field goal. They picked up the pace now. Two third-quarter touchdowns. Hey, you remember that appearance we had last week in front of that crowd, and, and they asked yeah. about halftime adjustments and all that that was going on. And remember what I said. It's not always an adjustment in halftime. Sometimes just remembering the game plan and playing better, tuning it up, and just working through it methodically, they got it done in this case. And of course, I'll always remember that appearance because I had on a brown belt with black shoes, and you pointed that out in front of the crowd. So thanks for that. I said that all You did. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call, and he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion, and now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves back now comes tampa bay their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and ten yeah. 
He'll start on the ground here with Bernard. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second and seven, Brady into the secondary past the 40. And he'll get this all the way up to the 42-yard line. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first down, Brady. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. Seven yards to pick up there. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at their 49-yard line. Three yards remain for second down. Now Brady. And that'll be caught by Darden. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. They it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 38. A handoff to Fournette. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. He's getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Second down, back to Fournette. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Three quarters in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. From the gun, it's Brady. Quick completion here to Johnson. Give him nine there on the first down completion. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Brady. Getting it out wide here to Bernard. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. And that's good for a gain of six. And that'll make it second down. Now Brady again. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Chris Godwin, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, 
They absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. Extra point up and good by Suckham. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. No return here for Patterson, so they'll begin things at the 25-yard line. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. the Falcons up now first and 10 at their 25 yard line throwing to start the drive Ryan over the middle Sharps got it complete and they finally get him down but not before he reaches the 34 it's a big play there for Atlanta and CD we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together but I think we could at least put this one in our top five that was a determined gallop there and that in a nutshell shows you what this guy is made of I mean most guys in the NFL just can't do that he absorbed the contact refocused himself and made a break for the end zone on first down Ryan and he's gonna have the hook up to Gage and inside the 20 before he's brought down from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Pitts. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Again, Ryan. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Here's Ryan to throw. Touchdown, Falcons! Kyle Pitts from six yards away. And the Falcons have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Extra point by Kuhl up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. So out come the Bucks now. Things sure were looking good for them at the half. Heck, off the air, you and I were just saying they might run away with this thing and cruise to a victory. Not anymore. Yeah, the cruise control has to be off at this point. Now you've got to match the gas yourself. Again, who's going to step up and make a big play for you? Who's going to take care of business now that you're being pressed? It is definitely go time for them at this moment. All of a sudden, clinging to a slim lead and hoping to hold on to that lead. He was brought down by Foya Sade Aluakin. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, 
do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Brady to throw on third and one. Complete, it's Johnson. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Throwing now is Brady. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Meanwhile, Brady's throw on target to Godwin here. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. Here's Brady to throw. That's complete to his running back, Evans. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And he's got this down to the 35. 48 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. And the carry on first down by Fournette is going to wind up losing yardage as he stopped for a loss of a couple. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. second and 12. Brady going to look to throw. He finds his target. It's Evans. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop. 150 left in the football game. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Now Brady. This is caught. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Jalen Darden from 19 yards away. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. Extra point put through by Suckup, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And Patterson will not return it. It comes out to the 25. So Ryan and the Falcons down by 10. A minute 46 to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Here's Ryan. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. 
We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Throwing now is Ryan. Looking left side, and it's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. And all the way down to the five. It's a big play there for Atlanta. Well, he's been doing this for more than a decade now, showing that he's still got that arm strength from back when he was the number one overall pick. And I'm really not sure what was more impressive about that throw. Was it the distance travel or the accuracy involved? Because I'm going to tell you straight up, when you're trying to hit a guy in stride that far downfield, there's nothing easy about it, but he sure made it look easy there. Yeah, and the next-gen stats showing that at an even 57 yards through the air. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Ryan to throw. And he takes this one into the end zone, and all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. score game now probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up yeah they have to it's not a high percentage play but it's better than not having a chance at all and that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side get that high hop and hope that one of the guys can come up with it and on the other side get that hands team ready no doubt about it two able to connect on the extra point and now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter and this is going to be recovered by the hands team and that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Now Leonard Fournette. He was brought down by Eric Harris. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you watch high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. Yeah, he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory. And I tell you, these division games never for the faint of heart, but they come through with a tight victory here on the road. And you find yourself working harder in a game like this too, don't you? Yeah, because pop, you got to stay sweat. with it, right? You got to stay with it. You got to stay locked in. It's our type of a game. And you just mentioned it. Division game on the road, tight, and they find a way to win it. Way to hunker down, as my old coach used to say, and find your way through.